Okay, this is the second video on oils, refrigerant oils. And I've got some oils shown here. Now this one here, this is the mineral oil that I talked about before. Okay, this was used with the CFCs, the HCFCs. Actually, this oil we used for many, many years, developed for uh, mostly CFCs and HCFCs that mixed well with the refrigerants. The refrigerant is actually a solvent in it. This was forever the oil we used. And around 1990, some changes came about due to uh, ozone depletion and global warming. And we came up with some other oils. Now, this oil here is PAG, or, well, let's just call it PAG. <laughs> I, I get mixed up on what they, the words actually mean. Okay, PAG oil was used with 134A. Now, it's not the only use for it, but it was used with 134A in automotive, especially. Uh, one of the uh, attributes of this one is it uh, did not have a real high dielectric strength. Now, that meant that in motor compressor assemblies, it could conduct electricity under certain conditions. Uh, and so it was mostly used in uh, automotive applications where it was like a belt-driven compressor. That's not always true. I own a car that has an electric motor compressor for its air conditioning, and it uses PAG. So obviously it could be used. A very hygroscopic oil, meaning it absorbs moisture. If it's left, the system's left open, this will absorb moisture. And we'll talk more about that later. But this was an oil that was very commonly used, still is, uh, in the automotive air condition. The reason you couldn't use mineral oil with it was because uh, in, in these applications, this mineral oil uh, reacted with R134 and made kind of a goo. We used to actually, guys would change out uh, R12 to R134A knowing the oil wasn't right, but they figured, heck, compressor may last a year or two, and if the car is old, eh, who cares? Compressor goes out in a year or so. I guess that's it. Maybe the car is dead by then. But uh, this oil would not mix uh, well with uh, R12 or any of the CFCs or ACFCs. Okay, PO. This is PO. Now, polyolester something. This one's probably more common. I see it mostly used with R410A. Uh, this one, again, is made for the newer refrigerants. Um, R410A is a blend of two refrigerants. And this works well with it. It is also hygroscopic. It means it absorbs moisture. And I'll go a little farther in this hygroscopic stuff. Hygroscopic, you know, all oils are hygroscopic, even mineral oil. They will absorb moisture. I know it doesn't sound like mineral oil should absorb moisture, but it does. This just does it more. And let's say you had a system that was open that had this oil or PAG in it. What would happen? Anything longer than about 15 minutes, this oil is considered contaminated with moisture. Now, does that mean you have to remove the oil? You know, removing oil is really hard to do 
on these hermetic systems, uh, it's quite a job. So we're not going to do that. What we do is, like one guy would say, well, we could evacuate it very deep. That'll take the moisture out. That actually will not pull the moisture out of these oils. It will stay in even under deep evacuation. So I'm going to talk and pack and pull both here. So these, in order to clean the oil, remove the moisture from the oil, we use oversized dryers. And that's been pretty effective. That, that has uh, kept us out of trouble. Okay. The last one is alky benzene or AB. Now alky benzene, I don't see it used much anymore. Pretty uncommon. It was used with a lot of the changeover refrigerants. In the 90s, we had all these blends. We were trying to change over R12 and R22 machines to, and 502 machines to uh, operate uh, as kind of a drop-in refrigerant. Well, this oil was used in a lot of the uh, compressors at that time. I didn't see a lot of it. There were a few compressors. This seemed to work with uh, 22 also. I don't have a lot of information on this stuff, but it worked with uh, uh, 22 and replaces for 22. And I think I saw it in some 12 machines. The one thing about this oil, it tastes really good. Of course, I'm kidding. It's not alky benzene oil. I couldn't find any. It's homebrew, honey pale. And it is really good. It's kind of warm right now. Okay. For the real oils. <laughs> this is not definitive on how the oil works and all these sort of crazy things that... Uh, that are involved with oils. This is for a service tech to have some understanding of what these oils can and cannot do. The biggest thing, of course, is the hygroscopic uh, aspect of these two oils. Miscibility, as I talked about miscibility in the first one, uh, obviously the uh, Mineral oil was not miscible with HFCs like 134A, uh, and it reacted with the 134A and damaged components, so it was not viable in those. I, d I did a bunch of changeovers in the 90s, some 502 machines and a bunch of 12 machines and the like, where we had to change over. Some of them we didn't have to change the mineral oil depending on which refrigerant we were using. Some of them kind of worked, kind of didn't. You know, there was a lot of stuff that didn't come out too good uh, in the 90s for these changeovers. It's pretty well settled now because we've gotten rid of 12 and 22 and 5 deuce. Uh, so mostly you're probably going to see these oils. This is not the end of this. There are more oils out there for different refrigerants. You have CO2 as a refrigerant that uses a different oil altogether. Uh, the uh, PAG oil is used with 1234 uh, YF. That's mostly in uh, automotive, kind of like the 134A is because it has such a low global warming potential. Uh, so you're going to see these two oils and other oils used. These oils are miscible with the refrigerants that are used with. And like everything else in this business, manufacturer's instructions are the most important. If a compressor manufacturer specifies a specific oil, that's what you use. Uh, if they say you have to take the other oil out, then you have to take the other oil out. Uh, I have seen what's happened 
to, I remember one specific one, I had a, an industrial machine that used 502s. And uh, uh, they changed it to one of the blends. Uh, one of the techs did, and he didn't even think about oil. A year later, I come out and, you know, it had failed. The compressor had failed. And that whole machine was just filled with goo. Uh, I, I just, I went over and over on this thing. I, I had to change the oil, I think, four or five times before the testing strips would come out right. I mean, there's testing strips for all this, and, and there's a whole procedure. I'm not going to go into that here. But uh, it is important that you use the oil that's specified for the machine. Okay, that's all in on this for now. May do more on oil later, but uh, that's it.